my my government name, my real name is Tracy Hughes. My derby name is Dreadlocked and Loaded. I was having a good hair day. <laughs> and I skate as a Victory Vixen on the uh, Victory Vixen home team for the Kansas City Roller Warriors in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm just curious about your experience and I would love to know your take on it because, you know, here I am experiencing these things and seeing it from, you know, when, when Singh told me, you know, I, yeah, I felt some racism in the, in the league. I was like, oh my gosh, was it me? Was it, did I ever do anything? I mean, I, I have a very white girl experience of roller derby. Um, so I, 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 I might have perceptions of it and be able to process it at times, but I'm also not experiencing it. So I want to give you guys voices and be able to kind of talk about it and, and like things that leagues should be thinking about as they're expanding or trying to expand. Um, I would love to know your take. Okay. So with all of that said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me, let me go through my, you know, my plethora of memories. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was drafted, you know, drafted yeah. in the summer of 2016, but by that time the season was over. So thankfully I had, you know, the whole rest of the year to try to get my skills a little bit better yeah. uh, before I was actually placed on a team and, and got to play in live games. I felt embraced by the league as long as I was just doing skating stuff. Uh -huh. But if, if anything happened to happen that out, that was outside of Derby that, oh, by the way, had something to do with race yeah. and maybe affected me in a different type of way because it was something that was racially motivated. Yeah. And again, this is, this isn't even anything Derby specific. This could have been like, um, wow, 2017, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on yeah. in my life personally, but it, it could have been anything outside of Derby, you know, maybe I heard about something, um, maybe a police shooting, or maybe I heard about um, someone being discriminated for something really, really ignorant, you know, and it, it affected me as a Black woman. If I happened to mention that within Derby spheres, it wasn't, I didn't get that shut down. No, you can't talk about it. Yeah. But I definitely didn't get a sense that anybody wanted to hear me vent or wanted to hear me say anything about it. Wow. Um, the, the racism that I've experienced has been more of a, a clueless type. And uh, let me give you, let me give you a couple of examples. Yeah. My hair, my hair, my hair, my hair. Um, the picture, and actually, I love man, your picture. Yep. I love your there, picture. The story behind this picture. Yeah. Um, and this, this was during, um, what do they call it? Um, picture day, picture yeah. day. Um, so the day before I had washed my hair and had just reset my locks and I wanted to do something different with my hair because this was, uh, for my second season, the hair, that I did for my first season, it was okay, but I, I wasn't really thrilled about it. Yeah. So I was on my own hair this time and I, I wanted to kind of go for something a little different. Yeah. I had just heard about a different way of doing my locks where it would kind of come out wavy and squiggly. Yeah. So I had retwisted my locks and then did a double barrel roll for my locks and then slept in that overnight. So it would come out and hopefully squiggly and curly like you see, right? Right. When I got to the place where we were, um, get back to the, the actual view here. Yeah. When I got to the place where we were doing makeup and hair and um, taking the pictures, I still had my hair in the double barrel rolls. Now at that time, my locks were longer. I mean, right now they're, they're pretty long, but they're probably about half the length now that they were at that time. They were, they were going down almost to my butt. Wow. But when I came into the building, it, it looked probably about this length because of the way it was wrapped around each other. Okay. And oh my God, it was like a magnet. Oh my God, your hair is so cool. Can I touch it? It's like people's fingers are already in my hair at the point that they're asking, can I touch it? Oh my gosh. 
And I, I was in a constant state of no, 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 stop. Yeah. But every time I, I could never pull myself away before someone had their hands in my hair already. Yeah. So it was like this constant, at least four or five times, constant build of get out of my hair. Yeah. And I actually did pull a few people aside and say, it's really not cool to just kind of thrust yourself into a black woman's hair. Yeah. Um, anybody's hair really but for black folks it's, a thing, it's got right? some extra connotations that you may not necessarily be aware of right and at least three of the people were actually open to hearing about some of those connotations now it will be a little bit different for every black person out there but for me individually I've been doing my own family history off and on for a little over 20 years yeah and I have actually found evidence of my third, fourth, fifth, and sixth great grandmothers, I found them on an inventory of, of someone who was getting ready to pass away. And so they were being willed to that enslaver's children. And I found their names and their values on that piece of paper. And, you know, totally mind-blowing. So for me, I, I get this very real sense of what it must have felt like to have been inspected before sale. Oh yeah. And and I don't want to feel that in 2000, whatever. And I definitely, I'm, I'm pretty positive that they didn't want to feel that in 1800 and whatever. Yeah. And it's so it just carries over for me. Yeah. That, and also in addition, uh, the concept of human zoos yeah. were actually a thing um, in the, late 1800s, early 1900s, and even going into um, the 20th century from 1900s um, up to about, I believe 1950 or in the 1950s was the last time that I'm aware of that a human zoo that featured black folks was actually in existence, I believe in Belgium. Wow. 1950 this is 2000 yeah, it's not that long ago and people would treat them like you know they were exhibits and my hair and my person is not an exhibit so going back to picture day kept happening kept happening kept happening and I was just oh please people just get out and stay out of my hair now Foxy is a fabulous makeup artist and she was busy she was making up a whole bunch of folks for picture day. And I wanted to specifically have her do my makeup yep. because I also have memories of the first season. Uh, my first season, when I got my picture done, I looked okay, but I, I also looked washed out. And, and it was a white makeup artist who did my makeup. Yep. And I, I just looked very pale. And I didn't feel like I could say anything at the time because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So when I saw that Foxy was doing makeup this time, I was like, I don't care how long it takes. I'm waiting for her. Yep. So way later in the day, she finally has a spot open up and I plopped down and she asked me, what did I want for my makeup? And I sat there for a second and I thought, make me up as if to say, if I have to experience one more goddamn microaggression. And she kind of yeah. went, and then she looked at me and she said, I got you. Yep. And that yep. was what came out of it. It's beautiful. It is It beautiful. is my absolute favorite picture of me because, I mean, look at how badass I look. <laughs> you do look like I a mean, badass. <laughs> the hell on. The hair was popping. The yep. makeup was on point. And I was still hella angry from... I don't know how many people just get, oh, can I touch it? Can I touch it? No. Yeah. And then people were actually, some folks were actually getting upset that I was saying no. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's something that still happens to this day. Um, I think the last time it happened in a derby context was just before the pandemic hit. I think one of the last times I went to um, to watch some folks play derby and uh, was talking to a former teammate of mine and then a, for, a, a teammate of hers, because it was a different Derby league. 
and we were all talking and she, I could just see her looking at my hair and I just had this sense. I just had the sense. Yeah. And then she said, oh, your hair is just so cool. Can I tell? And I, because I had that spidey sense, I was able to start moving away before she got her hands in it. And fortunately, thank you, Sissy Face Chat. She actually kind of interceded for me and said, no, 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 no. That, no, don't do that. Yeah. That's, that's not a thing to do. And I spent the rest of the time that the three of us were talking, just kind of casually moving it my, away. My, mm -hmm. Cause again, Spidey sense, I just felt like she was going to try it again. She didn't, but I was hyper aware at that yeah. point because I'm always hyper aware of it because somebody is going to be, you know, fondling and fingering through it. And there's really only three people who have permission to just thrust themselves into my hair, my mother, my lover, and my hairstylist. Yep. Yep. My mother is gone. She passed away in 2017. Yep. I'm single and I do my own hair. So yeah. <laughs> really narrows it down. Yeah. I, I love that you've given some context to it. And I think this is such an important conversation to have. Um, because I don't, I don't think that white people or you know, anybody really understands that the way you laid it out is so it's like duh <laughs> it's so mind-blowing but i i don't know how many people understand that that thought process behind it um so i appreciate you sharing that with me um and and oh, that, yeah that, that that's mind-blowing mm -hmm.